Welcome to the All Things Wildfire podcast, where we delve into the latest trends and hot topics in protecting properties against wildfire. So sit back, relax, and join us as we arm you against disaster. All right, welcome everyone to another episode of All Things Wildfire. Today, I have a special guest, Mr. Michael Plaxon with Alchera X. You got All it. Right? That's cool. absolutely correct. So, Michael, look, I was... Uh, I was intrigued by your company when I saw that you guys are part of this X Factor uh, prize that's going out there for wildfire prevention, right? Can you talk a little bit about that really quick? Sure, absolutely. Um, X Prize, what they do is over the course of, I think it's about uh, almost 30 years now, uh, they've been creating special prizes that have been for things like space flight, right. um, food, uh, oceans, the, anything to help the planet. And just over this last 60, 90 days, they came up with a new program called Ending Destructive Wildfires. And they want to do that on a global basis. Nice. And for that, they came up with an $11 million prize. And that's a nice prize. And it's open up. They want to open it. The way they do it is they open it up to teams. You have to register. Register with your teams. You can register as a company. You can register as an individual. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are in the world. And so just, I think, within the past two weeks, they had the uh, launch over in Washington, D.C. Boom, I saw that. And so what happened was... I went over. They asked me if I'd go. I made it a point to go because I wanted to be there so that uh, I could meet everybody on the board. I actually had the chance to um, meet with FEMA, the director of FEMA, Dr. Okay. Lori Moore. Uh, and I said, look, I know this is a four-year program, but you have a wildfire problem today. Yes. Why don't we have a conversation at some point in the near future? And actually, I'll probably be setting that up shortly as well. That's so awesome. That's awesome. It's a great opportunity. <coughs> it's, a, it's an amazing thing from a prize perspective to be able to do it. $11 million would be nice for the company to win. I'm happy if that works out. But even more importantly, this is something, as I told them, We've been doing this already for the yes. last two and a half years. And as yes. I mentioned to you and I told them, I said, write me the check now because we're the guys that are going to win. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so you were in Washington. Was Peter Diamantes there too? Peter was there. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So he, he helped he's, launch it. Yeah, he, he's pretty much a badass and one of these guys that uh, really gets a lot of people in there uh, that are philanthropists to come in and donate, right, for these really awesome causes. Um, look, I'm excited about you joining that competition. Uh, but let me do this. Let me just rewind a little bit and kind of unpack the Alchera X uh, business model before you guys created Fire Scout, because Fire Scout is really what we're here to discuss. But it's so intriguing to me, the business model that you guys had before and really powerful tool that, uh, that you guys have. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen really quick. So as we look at... Uh, Alchera here. This is your uh, your main website, yep. and I, I see this facial recognition. Like <coughs> we've seen this. Okay, the the standard person's looking at this and going, "Okay, we've seen China has this. We see these countries have it, and it it feels kind of taboo. It kind of feels like Big Brother." But you guys have been doing this. Where do you guys do it at? Who who actually utilizes it, and how does this work? Okay. Spend on that. Please. Great questions yeah, on yeah. all the way. Let me go. So what happens is uh, the company Alchira has been around for um, uh, almost nine years now, closing in on a decade, of course. And so they started off with a concept about facial recognition because just less than a decade ago, everybody's talking about it, but nobody was really doing it. Right. And so Korea said, and that's where the corporate headquarters are, HQ is in Korea. We've got offices also in Vietnam, as well as over here in the United States. We've got uh, 300 plus people we grow every day with the technology that we're building, also with the monitor and staffing people that we use, which obviously I'll talk about in a bit. 
but the whole company was faced on getting facial recognition to be successful. That's not easy. Uh, the picture, the image on the screen, you're yeah. looking at a hundred different points on a face to be able to say that's that particular person. Wow. And then it can go ahead and give you a 99% accuracy viewing in less than one second. That's the goal. And it's important because if you're going to use facial recognition, which Alchera has the number one facial recognition program in Korea and is one of the top 10 throughout the world. Wow. They actually do, we do protection for the airport in Korea. It's, we're working with the government on several different projects, actually including Fire Scout, and I can talk about that later as well. So let's talk about the airport really yep. quick. So, so I walk in and it does the digital imagery and then, then what happens after that? Well, the digital, I'm not allowed to talk. No, I, <laughs> I can tell you, but I'll have to shoot you. No, yeah. what happens is it will capture the digital image. Now, based on the digital image and what they do, not only at an airport, but almost in any business that you're going to work with, there's a number of people that work there. There's a number of people that are participants there that they know or that you use from a security standpoint. Those people will be recognized by the camera itself. Okay. So it'll hit it. It knows who you are. It will, as I, as I said, it'll put an oblong on you in green and put your name highlighted over it and it'll go recognized. It will then put everybody else in red and they'll have the imagery. So if there's a problem with anyone, then they can go back through it and be able to see, they can match it where they come in, where was the entry, oh, wow. what did they yeah, do, yeah. Yeah. did they go through security, if they did, what was happening. So they can do all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that you can do with the facial recognition even if you don't know who the person actually is. But to get the image and the data, that's an important factor. So the, the, in this facial recognition, the artificial intelligence, if, I, if I'm frequenting the airport or if I'm in, walking around Korea, all these, I'm assuming the cameras are kind of everywhere, I'm just assuming, um, when do I become green? Right. How, when, when do I, my square is no longer red and now becomes green? Do I have to enter information or yeah. what, what happens? What would, what would happen is in order to become green, in yeah. order to be recognized yeah. or as a friendly, I guess exactly. is probably the way to say it, you want your image to be input into the system. Now, it can be done as easily as, don't forget, the uh, state of California, for example, or over there, there's driver's license. So you True. can take driver's license images, go ahead and do it, and then it will recognize you versus because you've got over 100 uh, data points to check. It'll see my driver's license, it'll see me, and it'll go, oh, Michael Plaxon, there you go, we got it got covered. It. So that's some of how you can go ahead and do that, and then you're green. Wow. Now, I'm thinking about the airport right now. Uh, I have Clear. Have you heard of Clear? Sure, of course, I know Clear. Yeah, so, so when I go to Clear... Uh, I, I look at the camera, it looks in my eyes, right? right? And it's like, boom, yeah, we know who you are. And it's interesting that a lot of people might have this, you know, negative connotation to facial recognition, but man, I, I think it's something that we have to face. It's coming. I, I, there is no question that facial recognition is definitely coming. Uh, I forget the number of times that several hundred times a day your picture is taken, whether you want it to or not. But think about it. Any mall you walk by, any bank right, you go right. into, anything you're going, there's a camera and it's taking your picture. It's not really doing anything because there's no collective system. It's not all put together. That time, too, will come. But, you know, what happens is it's actually for the security. And part of what uh, Alchera is is to detect and protect. Uh, our goal and our, our objective is to go ahead and make the world a safer and more secure place using our advanced leading-edge AI technology. Boom, boom. All right, so, Michael, let's jump into uh, Fire Scout. Sure. And I'm really excited about this. Um, let me see if I could pull up the site here where – there we go. So let's look at this here, right? You are able to, with Fire Scout, the technology you guys are working on or have built and continue to install is this smoke detection. Is that what you would call it? That's exactly what it is. It, okay. we, we do a detect, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we use a detect and protect program. Uh, what we do for that is our cameras are, go, are set up to be in a situation where they're out there monitoring uh, any area where the camera is installed. We can detect smoke uh, anywhere from 15, uh, actually closer to 10, from 10 to 25 miles away. 
So we can see what you're seeing on the screen, a plume of smoke. When we see the plume of smoke, we usually can go ahead and detect it uh, in less than a minute. As a matter of fact, one of the public utilities we were working with, we did a, a test program where there were 300 fires that we detected. 200 of them were detected in less than a minute. And then wow. once we detect it in less than a minute, and, and I've got a number of fires which we can talk about, uh, we will usually detect it anywhere from 22 minutes to over two hours before a 911 call really? is made or any system is. That's one of the, that's one of the things that makes us uh, so great and gives us the opportunity to be the software program that is really used more than any other company on a global basis because we're, it was invented. The reason for Fire Scout was set up here in the United States, mm -hmm. but it's actually also used in Australia. And just recently, within the past uh, 60, 90 days, we had the government of Korea actually came over, the Minister of uh, Safety came over here to the U.S. to see one of the situations where we had Fire Scout installed because over in Korea, they've got the same problem with wildfires. As the XPRIZE says, it's on a global basis, a and global what are we going to do? And they saw what we had done. I had presented them with a presentation, talked about what we can do for them, and by the end of the day, they actually called back to uh, Korea and set the process in motion to start the program. So we wow. already have a program over there, and they're coming back again in the next, uh, I think, about month or so because they want to look at the process again. They want to expand it throughout the rest of uh, the Korean area. That's amazing. Now, Michael, let's look at the screen here. Here, this is... Like your little AI is is kind of putting a square around the plumes of smoke. Exactly. Um, where does this information go? Like, how is this whole system set up? Uh, are these special cameras, or does your software get attached to the existing camera? And then, where does this information go? Okay. Let me go with the cameras first. Yeah. We have a, uh, a situation where we're actually the greatest, one of the great things about our software program, about Fire Scout, is we're camera agnostic. A lot of software programs have to be, it's that one camera, that's all we can use, that's what we have to do. You can take our software program and with the, they call it the API key, with the software key, yeah. you can go ahead and install it in almost any camera and get it up and running within about a week's period of time. Wow. So that's from the answer on the camera. The way that works is this works on a, a, a multi-step process. First of all, you've got the camera. It will detect the smoke. It'll detect the plume of smoke and say, it's a fire. Or, you know, that looks like a cloud, too. And right, there's a right. lot of problems with, that's part of when I mentioned we have over 10 million images of fire itself that we understand that the AI is trained on and it's added to every single day. Then we have over a billion images of just nature and forest and the ranges in which the cameras are overlooking so that the AI system can say, oh, I can see that's a fire. It's not a dust cloud. It's right. not storm. It's not rain. It's not snow. Um, there's one of our competitors that uh, actually had a problem because the camera was focused uh, on a snow area. And every time the snow machine started, it said, fire, Get out of fire. Here. Get out of here. <laughs> no, <laughs> fire, wow. fire. Okay. And then there was another one, same competitor. There was a smokestack. And the smokestack is actually putting out smoke. Right. And so it kept saying, fire, fire, fire. And it, it, it is, but it's, you can't it's put it yet. out. You're not putting it out. So they, they have a problem. The way we reach our 99% accuracy is you said, where does that image go? That image goes up into the cloud. So we store the image automatically in the cloud. Then it goes back to our corporate offices where we have several hundred people who are watching 24-7, 365. They monitor wow. the services and support. Okay. And I can talk more about that in a minute, but they monitor it. And in less than a minute, they'll go, yep, that's a fire. They'll go ahead and send back to whoever needs to be notified, they'll give them either an SMS, text message, whatever they want to do, an email, however they've requested to be uh, monitored and notified. 
and we don't have a number. We don't go, you only get two people. We'll go, do you want 50 people? Do you want, wow. we'll send it to whoever you want because our goal is when we're giving you, and that's what we want to do, when we're giving you anywhere from 20 minutes, 22 minutes to two hours jump on the fire, you can obviously minimize the amount of the impact of the fire and put out fires that people don't even know in the state of California and around the world. They don't even know that fire ever happened. And while we may burn, some burn 70 acres, some burn 200 acres, depending on wildfires are really quick spreading. I can't stop the spread because then, you know, things like smoke and wind and the weather and temperature and all those other things depend on it. What we do is by giving people that notification, we're giving people the opportunity to go ahead and be detected. We detect and we protect. That's how we Love do it. it. We've done, uh, we've interviewed quite a few people and uh, more recently, uh, a company that that really also um, shared that you know early detection makes a world of difference because it could be hundreds of acres or thousands and tens of thousands of acres that are burned, right? And the response time really makes the difference. So that way, the professionals can make some decisions when they're there and you know put this out within a matter of days versus weeks. Yep, that's correct. And what happens is what, what people don't realize, if you talk about, if you go out on the street or talk to your friends, you're at a party and you go, um, we're trying to solve the wildfire situation in California. The first thing you hear is they go, oh, we have two more helicopters and we've got yeah. two more planes that will do dumps and we've got another four fire trucks that we're adding. So we're really addressing it. No, you're not. No it's way. basically a situation where we've bought more Band-Aids uh, <laughs> to cover the situation. But, but what happens and what we're doing, which we really feel is the right way to do it, is in order to be able to detect it in a fast basis, an accurate time speed, and not only that, one other thing. There's some images as well, and I'm sure we, we kind of mentioned it. It detects 24-7, 365. We do nighttime wow. detection for fires. And when so you, nighttime you're talking about, right? Right. And we're talking about nighttime. And other programs, really nobody does it the way that we do it. I mean, look at that. That, that is amazing, man, to be able to see at night. So what's, what's going on there? You, there's a fire going on, yep. right? It's there, detecting that? It, it will detect the fire. It detects it. We use some IR on that, and so it'll detect the... Uh, uh, the fire and it'll notify it immediately. And one of the things that one of our utility partners actually mentioned to us is they use the Fire Scout program and they go, your program's amazing. In the daytime, it's really terrific because we use it, we can see it, and it's all there. But they said, you know, in the daytime, sometimes we get phone calls. Yeah, it'll be later. Yes, you recognize it beforehand. But they said at night, everybody's sleeping. Right. And nobody's monitoring it. And neither are our competitive software programs we do it. So we have the same person, same situation. The fire's detected. It goes over to our uh, support staff. They look at it. They go, <clears throat> sorry, they go, oh, yeah, it's a fire. And they automatically go ahead and detect. So we've actually, they said to us, you've saved lives because of your nighttime detection capability. And Ooh. I have to tell you, man, boom is right. I love that. That's what, when we can have the ability to make that kind of positive impact on what's going on in the marketplace and helping people and helping properties, that's what I love about working with Altera X. So now, now let's talk about who's using this right now, right? And so I know that you've been working with uh, Santa Clara Fire Safe Council. Yes. Uh, have you worked with Seth? Seth? <laughs> yeah, so I love him, man, right? He was on the I, podcast. I, right? I saw right. it. I, I saw yeah, the podcast. I, I love the guy. He, he's very innovative, very forward thinking. So when I saw this, I'm like, okay, of course, Seth has already been connected with you, right? Um, but from a fire safe council standpoint, I, I sing his praises because he's so um, intuitive yep. on what's necessary. And uh, he's got this passion to want to at least, you know, help his own community. So how are you guys working together 
uh, on this here with with uh, Santa we've we, we've worked with uh, Santa Clara where they've used our they've used Alchera and actually he mentioned it uh, in the uh, in the podcast, podcast. I thought he, he yeah, mentioned yeah. us in the podcast which I always appreciate thank you Seth but uh, what happens <laughs> is <laughs> what happens is we've had the pleasure to be able to work with Seth and for them to be able to use the the software program to do exactly what it is that we've talked about he's actually gone out I know that he does public service community programs he'll speak with people he'll talk about it and do presentations he's actually mentioned Alchira X <clears throat> excuse me in the presentations themselves just to let people know that uh, it's not just one person and I think that that's one of the things that that Seth had actually mentioned is that it isn't just one person I, and while I like to go yay we're fire scout we're the best and we are at what we do right but we're not I'm not calling the you know one of the sales guys going listen you got to go put out the fire you know that that's not what we do we right. do the detection we send out the information we do a hundred percent confirmation isn't it nice when you know you've got going to get a call from me if I'm going to say there's a fire you're not going to go was that a snowblower again or is there actually a, you know because there's a lot of money involved when you go ahead and do that and there's companies that we're working with now interestingly enough and you know in Southern California and I think I saw this in one of your other podcasts from an insurance perspective it's impossible to go ahead and insure some of these high-end locations and the values and the programs what some of the companies have come to us and said, look, uh, it was one, one fire retardant, when they, they do fire retardant and prevention, yeah. they said, if we set up cameras in some of the home areas and set a program up, can we use the Fire Scout software to detect it? And at least we have a detection capability. Then we've got a protection capability. We have a defense program set up. And then will the insurance companies come back? Because now we're giving them an opportunity to say, here's something that you can do when we couldn't do anything before. So we're having some of those preliminary conversations already to be able to go ahead and offer our services for those types of programs as well. I love that. Um, I was going to ask you, Michael, like, you know, this is – a lot of this is commercial use, 1,000%, and, and you know you can monitor the forest this way. Um, but going back to the homeowner idea, is this something that's affordable for a I, I Oh, gosh, here we go. It's, a, it's one, $1 billion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it if done? you can write the check now. <laughs> it, it's not, it is not expensive at all for a community to do it because it's a few hundred dollars a month per camera because you're monitoring and the service and the support that we provide. But um, it probably, for a home community, a number of homes that would do that, actually, we're the cheap part of the program because you've got to put up the cameras and you want to install the towers and then you've got to do that. What we're doing is the monitoring support, so it's not that expensive. I have a dream that uh, at some point in the future, I'd like to be able to offer it on all the homes have ring doorbell cameras or something similar to it. And yeah. if you've got that, I can, because again, my software works on anything. I'm agnostic. Right. So if I can put that on something like a doorbell, uh, eventually you can go ahead and monitor. Now we've had conversations about that. And then most doorbells where I live, actually it looks out onto some area that could burn. Uh, I also have one or two cameras. Nobody, most people don't have just one. They usually put one right, or two. Right. And so I've got one or two cameras that actually show some of the uh, uh, surrounding vegetation. So it would be great to monitor it. I think that there's an opportunity for that, but we've got so much ahead of us to do right at the moment with the work that we're doing, not only here in the United States, but on a global basis. We're going to work a little more on that, and then we'll come back to some of the personal. But it is not, it is not impossible right. to be able to do exactly what we were just talking about. So, so if a community decides, yes, we want to make the investment, they, they install these poles that are so many feet up in the air so the cameras can get a good visual of the hillsides, um, how, how does the camera work? How is it turned on? Is it 
Is it, are we talking about solar or what's happening? How is it powered? Actually, actually, the best way to do it, the way we do the cameras now, is uh, the people who are doing the cameras, uh, who we work with, actually do, they provide electricity. So you want to provide you electricity. You've got to have power. You've got to have power, power. You have got power it. because you, you want to have power because you want to have a constant stream. You're going to go ahead. You want to have internet connectivity because you're going to go ahead and send it to something. Anything that, um, uh, that's one of the challenges to on camera installation is because of the fact that when you're doing that camera installation, you want to make sure that thing is up and running 90 plus percent of the time. Yes. You're always going to do a lightning strike and take the camera out. Things can happen. And if the company who's doing it isn't on top of it, then you have an area where it's potentially could burn, but well, there's no camera. Right. The, the, the camera doesn't work. So yeah. that's an important factor, but that's how they uh, that's how they put them up. OK, love it. Love it. OK, so who else who's who's utilizing these cameras right now? Who are your clients? The the key clients and customers that we're working with right now are major are, are pretty much public utility services. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are using it. Um, we've got some companies that are um, working to use our technology because they want to fight fires and they know that if I can give them, I'm the first source. I'm the one they go to to say, you do the detection then we can go ahead, and that's part of the XPRIZE too, because everybody looks at, uh, one of the things with XPRIZE is they look at company and company and company, and they're going, is there something that those people can do, that those people can do? They like to say they can put it together. But we're working with some companies that are actually trying to be um, put out the fires and they're doing it in a different number of yes. ways and what they want to do is they have the same problem as everybody else where's the fire when can I see the fire and the fact that we can give them detection um, I've got people who are working with us where they're saying uh, we're gonna take uh, two cameras and actually when we use our software program we suggest that you use at least two cameras because it gives us the capability to do uh, detection uh, location estimation uh, in a more accurate basis so okay. we do that and then you can do it with one but it's not really the way to go and so what happens is we can do that the fastest that anybody else can under a minute when we can do something in under a minute no matter what the burn is on your fire we've just given you anywhere from 20 minutes to as I mentioned over two hours where you get a jump start and there's people who want to try and put the fire out uh, in a time period that if I get it in that time period the fires not that big yet I was I was working with uh, one of the um, uh, satellite, uh, they're, they're using satellite, and they're going, oh, we can do fire detection with satellites. And <coughs> great concept, great opportunity, fantastic. The biggest drawback, I said, is, so when does the satellite recognize the fire? Oh, it needs to be about two to three acres, uh, and then we can tell you. Well, at, oh, at wow. two to three acres, I've already lost, you've almost lost control. Yeah. And so you're in a situation where that's not really great process and it's getting better every day so you know there's a, there's opportunity for the future but at this particular point in time any other process that you're using even drones are going to only work for so long you can't keep them flying all the time it just doesn't work so using terrestrial cameras that are either fixed we use a lot of fixed cameras that they'll be pointed at based upon the view shed that you'll be looking at or they can use a rotating camera and it can rotate but if you keep it to a minimal degree because anything that you do satellites or drones or anything they're going over you miss you're going to have to double back and right. then you're not going to see the fire you've just lost several minutes worth of time and time is everything Got it. when it comes to a wildfire so um michael you you mentioned you guys are detection okay and in the x price prize competition are you having to couple your detection also with some sort of response or is it just the detection so that my question is are you working with other vendors to create the the response and the ability to to uh respond and turn out the fire because uh and I, you guys may already be working with with the firm but there's this helicopter man that is it's autonomous and it's going up and it's white and it's spraying boss check foam or some sort of foam on this potential wildfire and I think they're raising money too to get this thing off the ground are you guys are you collaborating with companies like that do you know the name of the company <laughs> I, I can look it up I just remember seeing it I think it was a couple days ago I'm like this is pretty impressive the name of the company is rain rain that's it that's right, that's right. so uh pretty simple but man I it looks like it's pretty cool are you would you guys collaborate for the x prize 
I just got off the phone with the chief technology officer of Rain last night, awesome. and I saw the uh, the I've worked with and have spoken with several times the uh, uh, the executive chief, CEO of okay. the company as well. So um, I'd say at this point, yes, we are partners because they had they came to us because they saw what it is that we can do for them, and that's one of the things again that imagine. If we can go ahead and give them mm. that many minutes of time, their objective is to go ahead and put out a wildfire as quickly as possible with as small a burn area as possible because they're going to bring up a small helicopter. They've got the personal helicopters. They're also using uh, large helicopters, the uh, um, uh, 350s, the, the big ones. Yes. So they're doing those autonomously. They're using those autonomous. They're actually the, all the, all their stuff is autonomous. Yes. They're not quite there yet. They're actually, they've done a test that's been very successful and has already worked. Um, and they're going to be doing several more, which we're working on with them in the future. So, you, you know, know, what's impressive is, um, here, let me see if I can find them really quick. Uh, when I, when I saw them, um, and I don't want to derail this conversation, but I think it's very interesting that um, the, the software they're using, they could actually uh, utilize it on an existing helicopter, right? Oh, yeah. That's, the, that's, the, that's, what they're, that's their goal. They want to be able to um, – you're, you're talking about uh, Max Brody, who's the CEO, and it's Brian Hatton, who is the uh, chief technology officer who okay. I've been working with. Um, okay. They want to use their own, they've got their own individual helicopters that, uh, those are the small white ones that you saw that yes. they show. Um, those are the individual ones, but they're also using large full size helicopters that they have the, uh, capability to go ahead and do the same thing. And yes. all of them will be, their objective is to have all of them autonomous and their objective is also to actually place them throughout uh, the state of California and eventually throughout the United States so that when we recognize and detect the fire, <coughs> they go ahead and get the helicopter ready to go. And the minute that I told you about that that's all we take, the chopper will be ready to go and, and get out there I and do it. it. Now we're talking about, you know, cool technology. Man, that's, that's so good. Um, very impressive. I love the collaboration. I think it's absolutely necessary. Um, and so now let me jump into the X Prize. So the X Prize, you know, I'm looking online here and it says, you know, end destructive wildfires. Uh, and now this is being funded to get competitors yes. to compete. Now, let me go on to here. It says Alchera X participates in the 11 million X Prize wildfire competition launch. Yep. Okay. And so let's talk about how did you get access to this or what were you thinking or, or what took place uh, on, on you being able to apply for, for this type of a competition? We know as, as Alchira, as yeah. Fire Scout, as what we're doing, we know that what we're doing is we want to be innovative in what we're doing from a technology standpoint. We want to change the marketplace and the way the marketplace thinks about something. And so every day I look at it, I've got some of my marketing staff that looks at it, the salespeople as we all work together to look at it. We're always out there in the marketplace going, what's different or where's change possible or what can we do? Uh, I try and give as many presentations, be on a situation like this, which I appreciate tremendously giving me the opportunity so that more people will know about what we do. Right. And the more people who know, we get more phone calls, I get more emails from people saying, if we use your technology, just like you asked, just like you were saying, right. people go, can we do it? And the answer is yes. It's just a question of how do we integrate it? How do we make it work for you? What's the best way to make that happen? I so when that. we were looking at this, I saw the X Prize. I'm going, this is an $11 million, uh, you know, in the pocket program. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you were presenting at the WUI conference in Nevada a yes. few weeks, months ago, yep. maybe. Yeah, about a month ago. And so what happened? Talk to me about that. You, you shared a little bit earlier about how that interaction came up with XPRIZE. What happened was, um, by that time, I'd already at least, I sent in an email saying, hey, I, I want to be on the XPRIZE. Let's do it. Let me know what happens. And so we had a booth there, and one of the guys stopped by and said, you know, we're going to be at your presentation, that's the, the lecture that you're giving, a little later on this afternoon. I said, fantastic. That'll be great. And I said to him, you know, you're really kind of wasting time 
time, you might as well just write us the check now. <laughs> and he started laughing, and he's going, man, I can't believe you could say that. I said, just, just come and watch. And so when we did, when I was doing the presentation, it was about an hour speech that I talked about what we do, the technology, the people that we use, the way we do it, how far-fetched and widespread we are in everything that we're working on. At the end of the presentation, he came up and he said to me, you know, I have to tell you something. Now I understand why you keep telling me to write you the check. You really have something, and I did not understand the, the impact that it has in helping to end wildfires. That's and, that was the, and that's what happened. And look, I, I, I believe it. I actually believe we should win and could win because of the technology that we're doing. It's not something that uh, everybody's talking about, oh, there's going to be new technology, and there, and there will be. But the technology that we have today is a result of technology that we've been working on for almost the past decade. And it's technology that we get better every day with the use of our AI, with the use of our systems, our engineers, and the application process. One of the things that we do in the process that we put the program together is we collect the data, then we assimilate the data, then we go ahead and refer and reference on the data, we put it all together, and we go right back to the beginning and do it all over again. We just keep looping the educational process of the software. We keep adding to and training. One of the things that I mentioned on the Human in the Loop product that we're using, the people right, yeah. who are doing this, it's from a two-month training period to a 24-month training period. For no staff? Yes. Nobody in the world has a training program and educational process to do what we do. It's what gives us the 99% accuracy on the program because we train people. It's four different levels of training. They actually start out just saying, oh, look, smoke. And then they go, oh, dust. Oh, uh, fire. Oh, um, snow, storm, dust storm, right. clouds. They have to learn. And then the, the, the monitor goes ahead then it goes after the three stages you become a monitor you actually as I say monitor the monitors we have people who monitor the other three levels to make sure that they understand and not only from a perspective of what they're watching but those monitors also understand the camera the technology of the camera the application what they're doing what happens the hardware what could go wrong and so we do that all the time and again since we collect all of our own data and we confirm and access all of the own data and update it, we have information and systems that nobody else has. Yeah. And that's what makes you know, it so I love uh, the human in the loop comment, man. I love that. I think, you know, that, that actually empowers artificial intelligence uh, to scale even faster because you have artificial intelligence that is, you know, making some mistakes. Sure. Um, but as you have the human interaction continue to course correct and course correct, pretty soon you're not going to need the human anymore. But in, in the beginning uh, stages, I, I would imagine it's so helpful to make AI even Absolutely, more because because as you said, AI left left to its own devices, will eventually start coming up with its own information or make some bad mistakes. And you hear that on the news. It tells right. you, no, it's not recommending the right thing or it's telling you something different. But with a human in the loop, especially in a situation where it's a visual and you have to go ahead and confirm, is this a fire? The system is just going to go, looks like a fire, could be a fire. I'm going to say it's a fire right. because better safe than sorry process, which is not the case. It's okay in some things, but that's not the case here because there's there's people's lives involved, there's property involved, and most importantly, there's time involved. And if you send, if you go, hey, there's a fire over here, when actually there's a fire over there, then that's a problem. And it's going to cost a lot of money, time, energy, and it could cost lives. And our job is to, as I said, we just say we detect and protect because that's what we do best. That's where we go ahead and help anyone who's using a system that requires our product that's where we go ahead and shine. Boom. I love that. So <clears throat> now you were sharing earlier that you have um, a personal experience with wildfire. Let's, let's talk about that because I, I feel like that probably um, brings some sort of humanity from what you're doing to the technology that you guys are working on to the end user who, who experiences the, the wildfires, right? And, yep. and the evacuations and stuff like that. So why don't you share a little bit about what took place? Sure. Um, about 10 years ago, 
Uh, I was I live in an area that's the wooey. I live in the urban interface area, and there's there's a lot of vegetation by where I live, and the houses are not right next to each other. And unfortunately, there was a fire in our canyon where I live. And what happened was, as I, as I had mentioned, there were a helicopter, news helicopters were flying over. And when you see your house on TV, it's not a good thing. No, and so no, no. what was happening was the fires were starting to burn. The, actually, they came by instead, knocked on a door, and they tell you, you have to evacuate. And I actually said, do I have to evacuate or do I not have to evacuate? And he goes, well, we recommend you evacuate. I said, okay, thanks. Not going. See you later. You're the rebel. You're the rebel. <laughs> yeah. You're, the firefighters, I just hate people like you. Yeah, but, they do. They, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm the rebel without a cause. Exactly. So, so you decide to stay. Like, what was going on? What was going on in your mind? I, like, what made you decide that? I was an idiot. Uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, if they tell you to leave, you really should leave. Right. Because at the time, I had no fire experience. I had the same level of fire experience that anybody who thinks that they know what a fire is like mm. is like. Mm. I'm going, no problem. I'll fight it with my garden hose. Of course. Well, of course, the garden hose. <laughs> the, gar the garden hose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. No, I that have a garden work. hose. <laughs> Don't worry. So what, what happened was I'm standing about... It's less than an eighth of a mile away. The, the hill across the street from me, the fire is burning. And you have no respect for fire unless you actually see or feel the true impact of it. And you could see it on TV and you know it's difficult. But when it's only a few thousand yards from where you live, then you get serious. And I'm going... This is not good. And now I know why they go, your fire hose, your garden hose isn't going to do anything. You can wet yourself down and hope for the best, but wow. it's just not good. So I was lucky because, as we had talked about, the fire running up a hill is really fast. Absolutely. It goes right up the hill. And so the fire was burning at the top of the hill, but going down the hill is very slowly. And the fire engines is came up. You were the I was bottom? located at the bottom. Okay. I'm at the bottom of the hill, so I was okay. Well, <laughs> I was I was time being, better. Yeah. yeah. And so what happens is the fire engines came up. The firemen started going there, and I was one of the only people who was silly enough to stay. And so I walked down to the firemen and I said, "Hey, uh, I'm here, and I'm happy to help." And they said to me, "Good." hook up this hose to the hydrant over there, and we're going to turn it on. And I'm like, really? I thought you'd just go shovel some dirt or something, but that's what they said. They're so like, free labor? Let's yeah, put this right, We'll to take work. them, yeah. So yeah. I, I did it. They were so kind. They were so professional. And they used the fire hose, but then they sat there and they said, you know, we're going to let it burn because it's not burning anything other than the vegetation right now, yeah. and so we're going to watch it. And it was a full night experience and an event that I hope never to have to live through again, and I don't want anybody to have to live through something like that. But that truly lasted as a memory for me and makes me so happy that I'm involved in what I'm doing right now because I help people not have to experience what I experienced Boom. and that's and what now, Fire Scout now, does. Now um, with, with Alchera X you're doing that right you're helping to protect and now even further with this X Prize like that's massive right so so let's talk about let's just say that you guys were to win okay and when is the competition decided by the way? The competitions, it's a four-year program, and what they'll do is they keep setting up. They'll start going with programs. They're going to say, okay, here's a test. You have to be able to do this. You have to show this. You have to do this. I mean, they're not just going to give it to somebody and say, yep, you win. Right. We'll have to prove it. The good news, again, for us, not only do we have proof that we're the best right now, but we're only going to get better over the course of the next four years. Who knows what the heck will we we will be able to have the software that I told you where yeah. you can just put it on a doorbell or something like right, that right, right. to be able to do it. But what happens is they go ahead and they keep giving you uh, points. You have to do things and you'll have to accomplish stuff is and it work every together. Year, every quarter? They haven't told us yet. They're okay. still working on the they're still working on that, and then they'll start bringing us up to date and say you've got to do this and you've got to do this. Got so it. when we do that, that's when I think there'll be more of that. Um, uh, inter uh, combinations of teams working together and right. those types of things interestingly enough the the competition or for the program that we just talked about with rain 
we've been working with them before the the X Prize was not what brought us together. Yeah, so that awesome. was something that we've already done. So so you have to qualify. Let's call it you know annually, and and only the top tier companies will survive. It's right? it, there's no so question. It's kind yeah. of like yeah, it's uh, pick the show and the, pick the reality yep. show, and then yep. the, you're going to get the you know you're out, you're out, you're out. But the, but they're doing it so uh, actually anybody can come in. I mean, if you've got an idea and go, I have an idea how to make wildfires you know go away, yep. and you can do it, they'll let you in. But you're going to have to prove your yeah. idea out. That's what's so going Michael, to happen. So, Michael, let me ask you, when you have competitions like this, does the XPRIZE fund some of your experiments? Or is it all no. self-funding and then you only get the prize if you win? You're, you're on your own. They, yeah. actually, they actually say, they actually, and I don't want to say you're on your own because when I was filling out one of the forms, they said, do you need any technological support? And I'm going, we have the best technology, so I think we're okay at the time being. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> so, I, so no, I'm guessing that they probably go ahead and maybe they'll cross match if they'll go, oh, look, Fire Scout, you can work with those guys or Got maybe it. they can do it. I, I'm sure that they're probably doing something like that. But from going ahead and being responsible for the creation of what it is that you're doing, your process, your program, you have to do that yourself. And they, they like you to do that yourself. I actually think one of the things that they're also doing, uh, Peter, I think had mentioned this, is it's an $11 million prize. What they're doing for the first time is I think they're letting people donate. So if they want to go ahead, right, if they want to go ahead and make it, it'll be a $12 million or $13 million, whatever happens, if you feel that that pulls at your heartstrings and that's something that you want to do, you can make donations to go ahead and increase the size of the pot. And I think that while we're all going, yes, it's an $11 million prize and I'd like to have it, I think that probably everybody in the program, everyone who's working on it and in the competition, I think we're there because we're all going we want to end wildfires on a global basis. How do we do this? And yeah. who's working on that? I love that. You know, I'm going to read this quote uh, from Dr. Richard Merkin. He's a, a donor for the X Prize for the wildfire. He says, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of wildfires on our local communities in California and around the world. I'm thrilled to work with X Prize again and to see my early funding grow into a large prize that will attract and innovate attract innovative solutions to this challenging problem like i think that is um very altruistic I, this is beautiful right for people to just say look i'm in um i, I want to donate to a fantastic cause that first of all uh is going to serve uh the the western united states where it's happening all the time here locally but worldwide this is this is this is a worldwide problem. We can see Canada's on fire right now. It's it's it, incredible. It, it is a it is a problem. We're actually working with uh, with Canada right now. Um, there's organizations that are asking for our support um, because what what happens is you're seeing that people are there's not a lot of cameras out there. I think that's probably the biggest thing here in the state of California. We have access to over a thousand different cameras that we that our software is already on. We monitor well over half of those on an ongoing basis. But once you leave the state of California, um, we're working with Nevada. We're working with um, uh, Massachusetts. We're working with Canada. Canada's got some cameras, and they're going, we have to install more. Yeah. Uh, they've got other people. Boston, uh, Massachusetts uh, is in a situation where they're going, we need to put some cameras up. So the, the issue is you've got to get cameras up and installed in order to be able to do that. And people are just coming to the recognition of that because, you know, as great as it was to have the fire tower and a guard watching, they're not watching 24-7. And even if they switch people off, they're, they're not always monitoring it. But what we're doing is constant monitoring 24-7, 365. Wow, I love that. I think, I think uh, my friend, you have your work cut out for you. For you, for you. It's, uh, it's a big, big challenge. And I keep looking back to your website. I'm like, man, this, this ability to detect smoke is really incredible. Um, and if put to the right use with the right partners can really make a massive impact. Um, let me look here. I was looking at this here for, for Fire Scout. Um, and so, you know, we talked a little bit about this, but, you know, there's a question here when you're in your uh, general information. Um, and there's a question saying, what is the pricing model for the product? Like, you know, again, if someone were to say, I want to protect this community, you're saying, 
The, the pricing is not that expensive. Really, the setting up of the infrastructure for the cameras and for your software is much probably more where the expensive. Is, yeah, right? that's exactly where the expense is. Got because it. because from a software, we're just the software expense, the the monthly maintenance fee. And quite frankly, that comes out to several hundreds of dollars, uh, maybe a few thousand at the most. So it's nothing that's I impactful. But when you start putting up the hardware and you're building the towers, depending on how you do that, uh, there's some people, some situations that we've been in to help the people um, defray or minimize their cost. There's some towers that already exist. There's some cell towers yes, that are yes. up there. There's some uh, power towers that are up. And so, so if you don't have have to put a tower up, then you just really need the installation of a camera. The camera itself can be, I think, several thousand dollars, yeah. and then you can go ahead and do and that. Just get power to it. Get it's power to it, and then you're and you're good to go. And so that's not as as impactful as it could be. And then you've just got our monitoring service, and then the service for monitoring the camera, make sure that they're all, they're taken care of. But it's it nothing is as impactful or as expensive as being damaged by a wildfire. Mm. And people are beginning to realize that and they're going, we really should be putting up cameras. People didn't know this. I mean, you know, when you're talking about monitoring and we're telling we we're working with public utilities and we're doing this and we're getting all that systems, people didn't really realize that there is a software program out there that can detect early fire and that it can do it in less than a minute and that it can go ahead and give you anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours jump on the, yeah. on the cause. And then if you've got a home, especially here in Southern California, that's of, of consequential value and you have neighbors with the same situation, it's not that much to actually say, why that don't we go sense. ahead and do that? Because the services that you guys, I mean, think about it. If you combine your services with the home hardening and stuff, and as I mentioned, people start saying, yeah. if they do home hardening and they've got fire protection <laughs> and they've got the monitoring services that they've got, the insurance companies- and response team. Exactly. Right. The insurance companies that were just fleeing, that are fleeing California, will actually be going- Maybe we can come back because there's steps that are being taken. I mean, the fact that I have to take every year uh, at this time point now, I have to go ahead and trim. I have to do the trimming. I have to cut everything back. I have to cut the brush down. The fire you department. You, you have to. Who's, who's, who's I have to make a phone call. No, I. <laughs> who's telling who's you? Who's telling me? Oh, 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 that's the fire department, the Ventura, Got from it. where okay, I am. It's okay. the Ventura County Fire Department actually gives you a notification. You've got to do it. And they, they're not great. goofing around. Around. They will actually drive through and come in and they'll look and monitor. If you haven't done it or haven't done it properly, they will leave you a, they'll put a, a stick in citation. the ground, they'll leave you a citation and say, they'll give you a chance. They'll go, you've got one more chance to go ahead and get this right. And if you don't get it right or if you want them to do it, Boom, they'll you do get it arrested. for you. No, yes. no, 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 they'll do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you'd rather get arrested because the cost of them clearing it for you, you'd rather spend time in jail. But, uh, <laughs> but that, that happens. And as I, I mentioned, I was, uh, I, it was a Saturday morning or something, and, and I, I, I walked out of my house, and there was a, a truck, not a fire truck, but there was a truck there, and there was a woman who was from the Ventura County Fire Department, and she was standing there looking at one of my trees, and she said, you know, you've cleared your property, but that tree, technically you've cleared it, but to be honest, that could go up in a flash. Mm. I'd recommend cutting it back. And I said, do you want me to take it down? She said, no, you don't have to take it down, but cut it back. So we did that, and then... Probably about a year later, I was out running uh, as I run, and I saw her truck on the side of the road, and she was just sitting there because she was waiting to do it. And I stopped, and I knocked on the window, and she put it down. I said, hi, how you doing? I said, you'll never remember, but you came to my house about a year ago and told me to come. She said, oh, I remember exactly. Oh, <laughs> and funny. I said, I said, said I, got an, I got my eye out on your yeah, property. Got, <laughs> I'm watching your tree. Exactly. And, uh, and I said, look, I'll cut back. Everything's fine. She said, no, I appreciate it. And the more important thing is you'll appreciate that you've done it. And um, believe me, I do. So it's important. You know, I love that. I think uh, some cities are more proactive than others. Um, and, you know, I think when the fire departments are doing those inspections, it could be viewed as, oh, man, here's another hassle they're going to give me. But the reality is this is protection for the entire community. They're there. You know, I, I, I got over it very quickly. I'm not going, oh, they're eh, they're coming right. in and they're looking at what I'm doing. I know they're doing it because they're making sure that if my brush is cut and it's done properly. And believe me, there's people where we live that don't always cut back their brush and that those people do come in and have to do it. But I know that it's really for the safety of the community. And quite frankly, 
if it's good for my house, it's good for my neighbor. And if it's good for them, it's good for their neighbor. And believe me, sadly, the last time that uh, we were evacuated, um, there were several homes that were burned in the in the community. So it's always difficult. But you're right. They're doing it for our welfare. Absolutely. Um, and that's probably why when they come to tell me to leave, I'll probably do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. That's no. <laughs> a good idea. That's a good idea. That is now, smart. Now, Michael, as we come to a close, is there anything that you want to share with the listeners uh, that, that uh, you want to make sure that you get out there that you haven't said so far? I think that, uh, first of all, it's really, first of all, thank you. My thank pleasure. you so much for the Absolutely. time. This has been a pleasure. And believe me, there'll be other opportunities if you ever want to. There's more things that we're doing all the time. Love it. Um, I think that the most important thing is that we're here to detect and protect. We're here to support and service not only the community, the states, the nation, but we also do it on a global basis. We're working on programs right now, not just to protect from a fire perspective, but even more so because of the technology that we had the chance to speak about at the beginning, mm -hmm. we're going to protect on a facial recognition perspective. We want people to be safe in this country and outside of the United States. We've been focusing on Fire Scout, but we'll be expanding it to something that we call Sentinel. And the Sentinel program is something that we'll be doing over the course of the coming year, which will provide enhanced security for everything from businesses to schools to government facilities. Boom. I love that. And, and I think, you know, even if people don't really like that uh, aspect of it, because, you know, it, again, it feels like Big Brother. The reality is there's no stopping this. No, there's, there's no, stopping, there's no this, stopping it. And you need to, to me... And, and I look at it myself the same way that you were talking about it. I, you know, but the security and the mm -hmm. sense of security that we can provide using these programs and using our technology, it's something that I think will benefit all of us in the long run. Agreed. And that's what we as a company, as Altira X, that's what we want to be able to do. Boom. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you for coming on and congratulations on your uh, selection uh, to you. be in this ability to win this wildfire x prize i think that's so exciting and we're cheering for you so you guys make Thank it you. to the next level okay and then after that maybe i'll have you on and you talk about some of the testing requirements and what they made you do to jump through hoops and all that stuff i will be glad to keep you posted on the process as it continues i'll be glad to keep you updated on the things that we're doing not only with fire scout but as we move forward with that sentinel program as well it'll be a pleasure boom awesome all right guys peace out thank you for joining that's all for this episode of All Things Wildfire. If you like this episode, be sure to subscribe to our show and follow us on social media to stay up to date on All Things Wildfire. And as always, thanks for listening.